All right. Hello, everybody. It's the Meister from Brews and Tunes. Cheers. I am uh, incredibly excited today uh, and, and very much honored. Uh, I am chatting with uh, my guest today is, well, let me just say, if if you are a metalhead and you've listened to metal for the last 35, 40 years, then chances are the majority of your collection has a lot of Bill Matoyer's production and engineering. Uh, I know my collection has, the, probably the vast majority of my metal collection is Bill Matoyer. Uh, so Bill, thank you so much for joining me today. It's, it's, it's an honor to be chatting with you. Well, it's my pleasure. And uh, majority, wow. I mean, that's... The, it, you have that. You, you don't have a lot of records then, if uh, uh, <laughs> well, my stuff is in the majority, do you? Well, I mean, in terms of bands and just yeah, I mean, and just the influence, I think too. Uh, you, you know, you're. Uh, I mean, truthfully, and I'm not trying to be a kiss ass here, but I mean, I truthfully, I mean, you kind of your music, you know, especially with Metal Blade, and I mean, kind of defined my upbringing you know defined my musical upbringing in the 80s i mean truly and continues to but um yeah it's so uh, yeah i mean i think your your reach goes far um well i think more than anything you're just showing your age that's all <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> i am doing that as well that's that's yeah. true that's true so how are you doing what's uh, i know you're you're a busy guy i know you have a lot going on um and i'm i'm yeah, what what do you have in the right now in the in the in the pipeline? What do you got going on? Well, there, yeah, I, I've been working with a lot of LA bands, and uh, the one that I'm working on right now is this band called Yidra, hmm. and they're a doom band from Los Angeles. It's going to be the third time that I've worked with them, but I'm also working with I've, I've like five other projects that I have going on, you know. Nice. But that's the only the, there's three at the moment. And yeah, Yid was probably the only one that you've uh, uh, people have heard of before. Cool. But uh, you know, I'm talking to that 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 band that's uh, on your shirt. Oh, uh, they've nice. been doing some writing, and we're supposed to start working. You know, as soon as they have enough songs put together. So excellent. That's excellent. some cool stuff in the future too. But very cool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, I know it's, you produce. It's easy to stay busy. Good, good. Yeah, I know. I know you produced Tyrex's last album, um, which was. Yes fantastic and um you know and, and to kate and it's about time <laughs> yeah <laughs> he, he <laughs> been got... on his ass for a while to, to yeah. Do yeah and then i know we you know we had a pandemic there's a lot going on and but yeah I'm, I'm really glad and i heard the uh the new song he did um that that um and now i just forgot the name of it of course uh, uh faster than death i think it's called um so yeah if that's any indication of what's to come it's just a demo uh, well, I know Caden he's... sent you that stuff. Yeah, I, I didn't record that, but uh, I know he sent it to people that he respects their opinion. So if you got one, then uh, oh, good. yeah, that's that's very cool. Yeah, so I'm excited. Yeah, I think they're going to have some good stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah, because I I love the last album. I think you know, and especially the production quality. Um, I thought I think was great. And I know you did another recent album you did, which I adore, was uh, Evil Dead's newest album. Um, oh, really? and, cool. uh, which was great that they came back just you know pardon my language it just balls out i mean it felt like old evil dead from yeah. back in the day i mean i was it, and i it, it kind of came out of and it, maybe I, I just hadn't been paying attention but it felt like it just came out of nowhere and it just destroyed i mean it's just a destroyer and and you know and that's you know definitely a lot of uh you know your influence and 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 your ear um, well thank you that that was uh one of the ones that we actually got to do demos like two years before we started the recording so oh, wow. that just that doesn't happen but yeah. uh you know they're, they're all la guys they're friends so um that that was an easy one to work on because we had a lot of time to you know record the songs fix what needed to be fixed and uh do the real record and you're like Juan Juan is one of my dearest friends I've known him for over 35 years you know and uh it would it's always a pleasure working with him I still get to work with him uh now and then with uh body count so um, oh yeah 
That's yeah, right. I, yeah. I, I never do anything big, but you know, they can come over and do demos anytime. So we just did a, a demo a few weeks ago of a song that I'm, I'm not allowed to uh, say what the hell it was, but uh, <laughs> yeah, right. the, the evil dead, that, that, that was a good one. It was long, but you know, I wish I could do that with every band, just get to go into the studio, do the demos and then wait and then do the record. So kind of let it germinate a little bit and yeah. yes, yes. You, you get a chance to, uh, you know, hear what's good, what works and what doesn't when you actually get to go in and record it and record it right, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. That, that um, was I was I was curious. I wanted to go back in time and talk to you about, uh -oh. I know, uh, so you started, was it Track Records back in like 79 80 somewhere around there roughly it was around I, what what happened well I, well I didn't start it i started working there okay like i graduated uh high school and then i, I tried going to uh, a, a real college usc for a couple of semesters but it just it, it wasn't my end to so right after that i started to go into engineering school out here in los angeles Hmm. And it just so happens that one of my teachers, the guy that uh, taught electronics, was this guy, Tom Murphy, and he happened to own track record. Oh. So, you know, right from the, the beginning, when I started engineering school, I was lucky enough to, um, he, he asked me if I could work at his studio as a second engineer. So I wasn't doing much. I was making coffee, answering the phones and cleaning the toilets, but instead of pay, I would get to use the studio hmm. when, it was, uh, when it was vacant. So a lot of the, most of the earlier stuff that we did in Metal Blade, we did a track record because, yeah, I, I was getting a really good deal, but the only problem is sometimes the studio wasn't available until midnight, so we didn't get a chance to go in until midnight and we'd work all night and, uh, you know, the, those were the, the fun days. They weren't always easy, but right. things were a lot more fun back then. That's that's all I could say. But yeah. Well, you know, yeah, you're I, young I, I and track. it's an exciting time. And do, I mean, did you have a, and this, this might be a silly question, but did you have a sense at that time of kind of what you were part of? Did it feel like this is a big deal. There's something really kind of magical happening in terms no, of hell no. metal. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, no. I mean, I could remember the first time I worked with Slayer. I mean, if you would have told me how big those mm -hmm. guys got that, you know, when they played here in Los Angeles the last time, two times at the Forum, there's no way I would have believed you. So, yeah. no, I, I, I really had no idea then then again i was just a kid myself yeah I mean, yeah. yeah you were you young. Know, i was uh uh when metal blade started i i brian started in 82 and 83 is when i came along i was only 23 years old i was just a, a kid myself so yeah no but i had no clue that uh that metal blade would get so big either yes yeah. it's, it's great what uh brian has done yeah, definitely. And celebrating 40 years now. That's that's amazing. Yeah, that's wild. How how did you get involved with Brian? How did you get involved with Metal Blade originally? Well, um, as I said, when I was uh, working at Track Record, but I also had a job at a, a local a record store called Music Plus here. And, uh, you know, at, at Music Plus, I worked in the warehouse section. There was nothing but musicians there. Hmm. And because I was working at Track Record and I could get the studio for free, there just happened to be uh, like three guys that worked at the music store with me that were in a band called Dietrich. And I liked their music. I needed a band to kind of practice on. So when the studio was available, they'd come in and uh, we'd do some recordings. And after a few demos, we ended up making an EP their debut EP that was just called Dietrich. It had like five songs on it. And before we finished, uh, Brian had just put out Metal, Metal Massacre 1. 
and he had that the brag of his called the uh, the new heavy metal review and the singer came to me and said hey bill look there's this guy brian slagle he just put out this compilation record of la bands and he wants to do another one you should get in touch with him and see if maybe we can get on it so you know i um called brian up at oz records where he was working at the time and i said hey you know uh I have this band and I'd like you to consider using them on your next compilation. He's like, sure, just, you know, come down to Woodland Hills and uh, give me a tape and I'll let you know. So I went down to his work and gave him the tape. You know, we talked for a while. He gave me a few, uh, few cool records. Even, I think he even gave me an Iron Maiden record, you know. And, oh, wow. Uh, so a few weeks later, he called back and said, hey, you know, uh, I really like one of these songs. Uh, I'd like to use it on Metal Massacre 2. And I said, great, man, it's all done. It's, it's all yours. And I go, you know, by the way, I work at this uh, this recording studio. If you have any other bands that maybe need some recordings, then let me know. I could do it for you. And he's like, well you, well, you know, come to think of it, I do have this band, Armored Saint, that I want to be on uh, Metal Massacre 2. Do you think you could do them? I said, sure. So, well, you know, that's how it started with him. Nice. And then somewhere down the line, I just figured out that I was doing a lot of work at night at the studio, and my daytimes were pretty free. So I went to Slagle and I said, "You know, need anybody to help you with the record label? I'm usually free in the daytime." He said, "Sure, you yeah, know, well, I could use the help." And back then, his office was just a desk, a chair, and a table in his mom's garage in Woodland Hills. <laughs> so I'd drive down to uh, to his house and get on the, the phone and call up radio stations to try to get them to play some of the early Metal Blade stuff. And that that's how it started, out of Brian's mother's garage. That is a long time ago. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, Come a long way since then, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it has. That's <laughs> insane. That's wild. I never, I didn't ever know that. That's really fascinating. And yes. it's, it, and, it's just cool to hear th these these stories. Like, it's almost not necessarily, I guess, by chance, but sort of by chance. Like that, this just happened. Like these yeah. bands that are gigantic now, and you know, part of my youth, and and uh, that I still listen to and and adore. And to know that, yeah, it it started in a garage. That's it's wild. <laughs> I mean, it, it all started somewhere, <laughs> right? I guess so. But I mean, and yeah, yeah. I mean, so you you mentioned Armored Saint. I mean, you've produced and or engineered, um, yeah, some of the biggest bands, at, you know, in metal history. It's it's wild. Like the list is gigantic. Um, and I, you know, Flotsam and Jetsam, and I mean, you know, some of my all time favorites, especially the thrash metal. You know, I'm a big thrash metal fan. Um, so you know, Omen and. Uh, I mean, you worked with Morbid Angel. You worked with everybody. I mean, you've worked. I mean, in fact, I still have. I've got my. You probably remember this, the best of Metal Blade, um, and yeah, this yeah, is right over there. Some place, yeah, yeah. This is your resume. <laughs> <laughs> like this, this is your early resume. You know, it's it's such a cool, um, you know, to, to look. You know, Evil Dead and and uh, Fate's Warning and just so many bands. I, I would imagine the the stories that you can tell about recording some of these people and i I'm, I'm not trying to get dirt on any anybody but i would imagine there were some pretty wild times especially if you're recording in the middle of the night um you know in those early days uh, at track records um yeah I, I would imagine it was just some wild times um there, there were some wild things even you know starting off with the the Armored Saint guys, we were going in at midnight. And, you know, like I said, at the time I was 23 and uh, they were all younger than me. So mm -hmm. it was cool that, A, they can go someplace and drink beer when they weren't even old enough to, to, to <laughs> buy it. Right. But, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of other things you could do. First of all, starting at midnight, you're tired already. But by the time you're, you're drinking and, and, and maybe doing some types of drugs that uh, I won't mention, you, <laughs> you tend to pass out early. In fact, I remember when I was mixing that EP, I'm sitting there mixing and there, there, there wasn't a word happening 
in the in the studio and I turn around they're all just passed out on the fucking floor <laughs> and I'm like hey guys what, what do you think of the mix and all, all I see is they're, they're all like face down on the floor and I just see these bums <laughs> coming up and, and that was about it so nice yeah uh, things uh, th there were some fun things um, back then you know like even fun and frustrating like even working with the Slayer guys uh on show no mercy i mean they were a bunch of kids too and yeah. you know they're going around having fun in the studio they would bring like squirt guns into the studio they're running around squirting each other with these thousands of dollars worth of equipment around and i'm yelling and screaming at them oh my gosh <laughs> they just keep running from room to room squirting each other you know <laughs> so that's hysterical i can't yeah. it's, it's it's hard to imagine you know, a young Carrie King with a squirt gun running around a studio, you know, shooting it at, at Tom. That's that's yeah. funny as hell. I, yeah, I wish absolutely. I could have seen that. Yeah, it, people forget how young we were when yeah. all of this stuff started, you know? Yeah, that's you funny. Know, as far as your question about working with a lot of bands, yeah. It's because I'm old. I just been around a lot. So no, no, you were, and and that's again, you know, I mean, yeah, you've worked with so many amazing bands and just and and shaped, you know, helped shape the sound of of who they are, who they became, and who they still are, and and continue to do so, which is great. You know, we talked about Evil Dead. I know you did uh, Cattle Decapitation not too long ago. Um, you know, as far as like kind of some newer bands, but I mean, you've worked with. I mean, just, you know, Cryptic Slaughter, DRI. I mean, just the the classic, you know, thrash and crossover. Uh, again, you know, like like I was saying, I, you know, I'm not trying to gush, but I mean, shit, it's like high school. This was, this defined me. <laughs> like, um, and it's just amazing, like that, that kind of influence. And I, th I think it's important to, because sometimes we forget as fans that it's not just a band. There's, you know, a sound engineer, there's a producer, sometimes the same person who has shaped that music, or at least helped that band create that sound. Um, yeah, well, uh, I appreciate your words. But, you know, to be honest with you, people know me because I worked with good bands. Of, yeah, yeah, shitty songs, and no one would know who they were. And no one would know who, who Bill Matoyer is. So they get, they get the credit. They wrote the songs, you know. My job was just to try to capture them as as they were at, at the time. And, you know, that that's still what I think my job is. I don't want to change anybody. Yeah. Um, I just, I've been lucky enough to work with some great bands. That's that's all I can tell you. What, and maybe this is a loaded question, but I'm, I'm curious, like what kind of, what is your approach? And maybe it changes depending on the band, but kind of what, when you go into the studio, it, what's your approach? It has to, it has to change band to band. But if, if you're going to ask me what the basic thing is, it's just, I just want them to be them. I'm actually just trying to catch the band as they are. I mean, even it, it even goes down to uh, sometimes a band will, say, you know, a, a guitar player might go, well, I want to rent this and this and this. And I'm like, well, you've, you've had your equipment for years. You've sat in front of your amp and, and, and tweaked your sound. That is your sound. Why do you want to go into the studio and change it? Hmm. You know, I'd rather a band sound like, like them, like if they go on stage and, and play live. So yeah. that, that's what I think my job is to try to just capture the essence of the band and you know obviously working band to band it, you have to deal with many personalities so it's not like every time it's the same but as far as uh, what i think my job is i think it is the same just trying to get them just trying to get the band as they sound and not change too much right so you know i'm just there to help them get their sound down that's that's it do you ever uh, maybe you don't do this, but are you ever tempted? Maybe is maybe the better question. Are you ever tempted to like say, Hey, what if you did this? And oh, yeah. that yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. all the time. Nice. <laughs> that, that's part of the job too. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are you a mu musician yourself? 
I am not. I am oh. just a metal fan. You know, I used to play guitar when I was a kid, but I, I put it down one day and never picked it up again. Hmm. But no, I'm just, I, you know, I grew up, uh, I'm an only child. And uh, when I was growing up, I just tend to stay in my room, put on the headphones and, and listen to music, you know? So I was, uh, a, you know, the, the 70s were incredible for me. That's all I did was get in my room with, with the, the headphones on. And then, you know, I end up working at a music plus for I, I don't know how many years being around musicians all the time. And music had just been kind, kind of my life. Yeah. I don't know how to do anything else, to be honest with you. So, <laughs> well, I was just a fan, man. So, nice. Nice. Any, uh, were they, especially in the 70s, I was and I'm curious. I'm just kind of curious. I like kind of, how did, what were the big bands for you? What were you listening to? What were the the influences? What were the, you know, what kind of, and what were you looking for when you started engineering and producing? Like, was there any sort of particular thing you were listening for? Yeah, just metal. <laughs> just anything. Heavy metal. metal. And it's because, you know, I, I was born in 1960, you know, there was no such thing as heavy metal back then, but um, I grew up listening to Top 40, and around then it was mostly like uh, Motown, mm. and uh, I, I think what uh, what happened to me is, uh, I think I was seven years old, and my parents took me to see the Jackson 5 at the oh, Forum. Cool. And this band called uh, Rare Earth opened oh, up great. for the Jackson 5. And it sounded weird, but Rare Earth was on Motown. So that's why they had the opening slot for the Jackson 5. And I saw those guys live. And I'm like, wow, you know, I've, this is pretty cool. Never really witnessed anything like that before. And that kind of put me on the, the road to uh, the heavier types of music. And, Nice. Some of my uh, my relatives, I have uncles and aunts that aren't very much older than me. And when I would hang out with them, they'd be playing Jimi Hendrix. In fact, uh, a couple of my cousins were in a Jimi Hendrix cover band oh, way nice. back then. So it's just, you know, the, the, the harder stuff is what I started to lean towards. But then, you know, the first time I heard Black Sabbath, that, that that was it i'm like fuck <laughs> this <laughs> so it's that, changed that's everything life, and that's probably why i do what i do is because i'm, I'm just a huge black sabbath fan nice oh yeah i, I love that sabbath shirt on just before this interview and i said oh that's that's a little good let me take this off i don't know why but <laughs> it's, it's almost too precious for me so i, I gotta put this back <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that that just led to all the the other bands that followed in their footsteps they're still my favorite band hands down nice and, yeah so i would even though i've done so many other styles of music even just like working at, at a place like track record you know i was the second engineer and a lot of times uh if the owners um, came across a band that maybe didn't have a lot of money, I'd get that gig. Hmm. So I was doing country bands and, you know, just it, it, anything you could think of back then. And I do remember one thing that happened is uh, the, the owner had a friend who would come in and he let the guy sit at the piano and write. And uh, I would just sit there and work the tape machine, record everything that he did. And I was sitting there one day, one day with him and he's doing his stuff on the piano and, and I'm recording and he stops and he, he turns around and he looks at me and goes, what, do you, what did you think of that? And, you know, I go, oh, you know, yeah, that was pretty good. And then a, a little later in the session, the studio owner, Tom Murphy, came in and asked the guy how things were going and he goes man it's so hard to sit here and 
create when I look up at him, he's got the sour puss look on his face. Oh. That, you know, that's the first time I said, you know what? He's right. I'm not enjoying sitting here fucking doing this. <laughs> I just want to start doing the type of music that I'm into. And that way I can be into recording. Them. So that's why I started working with the heavier bands. Cool. Cool. That's cool. Well, that's, I mean, it, it, and it's probably a rarity to some degree, I think with a lot, it, it's great that you're able to, that you recognized that I'm not happy doing this. I'm good at what I do, but this is not, I need to do this. I need to work with heavy metal bands. I need to work with heavier stuff. That's cool that you recognize that and we're able to do that. that that's great. Yes. Yeah. And I, I was able to do it thanks to Mr. Brian Slagle. So that's for sure. So I have, yeah, cool. you know, everything that, uh, like I said, people know me because of Brian. So I just thank the Lord for him. Yeah. Well, I think that partnership was, you know, pivotal again i can't i i i don't think i can emph emphasize that enough how pivotal you know the two of you were with you know especially at that time and what came after that um you know especially for me um yeah so thank you for i mean thank you for your years of service <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah i mean you guys did you put out like yeah you changed my idea of music in a lot of ways which was cool um i do have a and maybe and you can you can feel free to tell me to fuck off on this question but i and i'm really but i am curious about are there any and maybe this is i mean i know this is a, probably a really loaded question i don't want to put you in, on the spot but i'm curious are there any particular albums that you're like really proud of like this was kind of a crowning moment for me um in, in terms of production or engineering um and again i you know i know you've done yeah that that that's a loaded question but one that everybody seems to ask <laughs> yeah so, um yeah Would, whenever i say something like that i'll i'll, I'll get a <laughs> get email, an email or text or else. something so i don't like saying that but i i do have to say that the bands that i've really enjoyed working with and I think I'm pretty proud of everything that I've done with uh, Flotsam and Jetsam, number mm. one. I've always loved working with those guys, and I think that pretty much everything we've done together has turned out pretty damn good. Yeah. And uh, the other band is, is this band Tourniquet. Mm. They're a, a, a Christian metal band. I, I did seven records with Tourniquet. And I think I've, I've been pretty proud of everything that I've done with them. And unfortunately, just last week, we lost the founding member and, and drummer, Ted Kirkpatrick. Oh, that's too bad. He just passed away last week. So I, I still can't believe it. But uh, they're, they're, he's one of the best drummers I had worked with. They are uh, a huge in the Christian world and uh, in, in the, you know, the Christian heavy metal world. So uh, every time I got to work with with them, it I was proud of and you know had a blast. Ted was pretty challenging to work with in that uh, you know it, when you're working with metal bands, you don't usually get to do strings, you know, the cello and 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 you know violins and stuff like that. And sometimes he'd bring in some instrument that I not only never seen before couldn't fucking pr pronounce you know <laughs> <laughs> right. i got to figure out how, how to mic it up so it was always uh, a challenge working with with ted and tourniquet so and you know the, the guys in the band are still part of my life and still friends nice. um, a couple of them have broken off and done other bands that uh uh i've, I've worked on so oh cool and as far as fun goes, I got to say, working with the mentors every time was, mm. has, is a blast just because it was funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, but yeah, there's, there, there are too many to, to think about. I mean, when you think of like Sacred Reich and DRI and, 
you know, th there's a lot of stuff that I am very, very proud of. The trouble records, you know, so. Oh, yeah. 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 There's a, I, I've been lucky. Like I said, I, I've been lucky to work with some great bands. So they deserve all the credit. I, I don't, I wouldn't say it's luck. I think you have a lot of talent. So, um, but, and, and, you know, and obviously, you know, a lot of people want to work with you. I mean, that's, and, and that's one thing I'm, I'm curious about too. That's actually a, a kind of a good segue. Um, I, I, and, and maybe it's changed over the years. Cause I know, you know, now you've got um, what skull seven production, your company, um, I was kind of curious, like, you know, I know in those early days, it was like, you know, Brian would be like, hey, I want you to record this band. Did it went, I'm trying to put this in the right words. Kind of when did that point change where it was like people sought you out, bands were like contacting you or I was curious, did you ever seek out, did, have you ever like, hey, I, I want to produce you. I want to work with you. Has that ever happened? Do you kind of, you know, I, don't, well, I didn't it, word it that very well. That, but... that very first band, Dietrich, yes, okay. that, that's exactly as I saw them and said, hey, I, I want to work with you guys. But, you know, I have to be honest, most of the other times it's because bands have come to me and said, hey, we like the way this, th this band sounded. We want to work with you. So it, it's mainly because uh, of prior stuff that I, I have done. Um, and, and I've been lucky that way. I mean, th there has been a, a couple of other bands that I, I might see and say, hey guys, you know, I'd, I'd like to work with you someday and maybe nothing ever happened. But um, yeah, it, it's usually because of uh, people like what I've done in the past that they, they still come to me. Nice. nice. That, that really hasn't changed much. That's good, that's a good thing. And it, I and I don't know, you know. Obviously, I have no idea what the production community is like. But um, as, as a fan, there's a little bit of fear that I have. You know, with you know, like you and you know, people like you know, um, uh, I just blanked um, <laughs> the the Morris brothers and uh, you know. Um, you know, Randy and, and Randy Scott, Burns. Yeah, Burns and Scott Burns. And there aren't, it doesn't seem like there's that many metal producers like there were in the old days. Maybe I'm totally wrong. There's probably a new generation that I'm not aware of. Um, but I know there's a lot of bands kind of self-producing now too, especially with home studios. Oh yeah, that's that's all that goes on now. <laughs> yeah, it's a very different game now, but at least- It's completely different. Yeah, but at least, you know, the good thing is you've got some of these, you know, older bands like, you know, Evil Dead, who we talked about, Hyrax, um, mm -hmm. that are like, no, I want I want it to be produced by, you know, Bill. Um, I did have uh, another question I was curious about, and you definitely do not have to answer this question, but um, are, and you don't have to name any names or anything, but have, have there been bands that have come to you and you're like, fuck no, I'm not producing your albums. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, you don't have to answer because <laughs> I, I would imagine there's times where you're like somebody comes to you like hey we want you to produce us like oh mm, not really a fan don't really like what you're doing <laughs> how about if i shoot you an email later and then yeah, you, that's I'll, I'll explain yeah, yeah that's i'll explain cool. that part to you yeah that's cool yeah i'm just yeah, yeah you don't have to answer, <laughs> but I, I would imagine it's especially being uh you know a legendary producer like i'm sure you're sought after and there's probably in you know over the decades there's probably been bands that are like hey we want you to produce this like yeah it kind of goes back to that time i told you with, with uh the guy playing piano you know mm. I, mean, I want to be into the bands that i work with yeah yeah that's good that's so good. yeah i mean if 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 i don't um if I'm not into the music, it's hard to do my job. That's, yeah. that's all I can tell you. Which is good. And, you know, I think that's that's um, not not only appropriate, but I think admirable, too, because I'm sure there's a lot of producers out there like, I just want to make money. Like, who, you know, who's big? Who can I produce? Where you're like, no, don't like that. I want to do what I like. 
I yeah. think that's important. I think, you know, that that's integrity. You know, that's art. That's good. That's a good thing. Um, cool. Sorry. I, I had to ask. So. <laughs> okay. that's uh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, I, so I, this has been amazing, Bill. This has been so fun talking to you. Uh, I do have one last question for you. Um, so as you know, my, my page is Brews and Tunes. I pair metal, mostly metal and hard rock with craft beer. So it's a Friday night, as it is, and uh, Bill Matoyer is sitting home, hanging out. What beer are you drinking and what album are you spinning? What's your pairing? Well, uh, I am actually drinking. Nice. Very cool. Iron Maiden's uh, uh, Trooper, and uh, it's a special occasion, so I figured I, I'd, I'd break that out. Yeah. And uh, I can't tell you what I am spinning, but I can tell you what I want to spin, because I still haven't heard the new King's X record. Oh, yeah. I haven't either. I, I wish I was spinning that. One of my all-time favorite bands, and uh, uh, I still have not heard it. So... If I had it, that's what I would be spinning. Nice. <laughs> nice. I love Instead, that. I got golf on the television. So. <laughs> <laughs> that works. That works. Yeah. King's yeah. Sports, I need man. to get my hands on that new King's X album, too. I'm a massive King's X fan. So, yes. Uh, I, I have the pleasure of uh, uh, meeting Doug more than a few times. Well, I mean, they, they were on Metal Blade. So, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. the fact that King's X, one of my all time favorite bands that, we, I got to work with a metal blade. It, it's, it's amazing. I've seen those guys live so many times, and they blow me away every every single time. Yeah, never I would have, never heard an off note. You know, yeah. I mean, they're, they're just amazing. They're all really cool people too. So yeah, really um, friendly and down to earth. And yeah, I've I've seen them live multiple times, and I would say yeah, one of my all time favorite bands and live like you said i mean they're just perfect they're and, and just yeah just kind of yeah it's you're, like you're kind of transfixed just... seeing them play um yeah yeah the like, incredible band so uh bill thank you so very much for chatting with me this evening this has really been an honor and a pleasure um and uh cheers my friend cheers and uh thank you and thank you for all the kind words is there anything that you could do to make me look better in this damn video? <laughs> I can't make Zoom. myself look better. I can't make anybody. And oh, you look life was much better before Zoom, if you ask me. But <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't mind talking. But you know, having to see me, that's a totally different story. Jeez. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> well, cheers, okay, my friend. <laughs>